have the captives who are the opposite of this day's strife. I do require them to make sure they are safe. Sir, I thought it fit to set some attention for the old miserable king. Sir, I hold you as a subject of this war, not as a brother. That's as we list to grace him. Methinks our pleasure might have been demanded. Not so hot. In his own grace, he doth exalt himself in your own addition. In my rights by me invested, he compares the best. That were the most, if he should husband you. Jesters do oft prove prophets. That I that told you so looked but a squint. Lady, I am not well, else I should answer from a full-flowing stomach. Mean you to enjoy him? The let alone lies not in your good will. Not in thine, sir. Half-blooded fellow, yes. Let the drum strike. Improve my title thine. Admin, I arrest you on capital treason and this gilded serpent for your claim. An interlude! There is my pledge. Sick! Oh, sick! And there's my exchange. I will respect my honor firmly. A herald, trust to thy single virtue, for thy soldiers have in my name took their discharge. My sickness grows upon me. <laughs> If any man of quality or degree within the lists of the army will maintain upon Edmund, supposed king of Gloucester, that he is a manifold traitor, let him appear by the third sound of the trumpet. Sound. Again. Again. Ask his purposes why he appears upon the call of the trumpet. What are you? Your name? Your quality? And why you answer these present summons? No, my name is lost. By treason's tooth, bear none and canker bit. What is he that speaks for Edmund, Earl of Gloucester? Himself. What sayest thou to him? Draw thy sword. If my speech offend a noble heart, thy arm may do thee justice. In wisdom I should ask thy name. But since thy outside looks so fair and warlike, and that thy tongue some say breeding breathes, I disdain and spurn. This sword of mine shall give them instant way, where they shall rest forever. Save him! This practice, Gloucester, by the law of war thou wast not bound to answer an unknown opposite, thou art not vanquished. Shut your mouth, dame, or this paper I will stople it. Ask me not what I know. What you have charged me with, that I have done, and more, but time will bring it out. Let's exchange charity. I am no less in blood than thou art, Edmund. My name is Edgar, and thy father's son. The wheel has come full circle. I am here. Where have you hid yourself? How have you done the miseries of your father? By nursing them, my lord. Met I my father with his bleeding rings, told him my pilgrimage. But his flawed heart, alack, too weak the conflict to support. Twist two extremes of passion, joy and grief, burst smilingly. Speak you on. You look as though you have something more to say. If there be more, hold it in, for I am almost ready to dissolve hearing of it. Whilst I was big in clamor, came therein a man who, having seen me in my worst estate, shunned my abhorred society. But then, finding who was twas that so endured, with his strong arms he fastened on my neck, and bellowed out as he burst heaven, threw him on my father, told the most piteous tale of Lear and him that e ear ever received. But who is this? Kent, sir, the banished Kent. Help! Help! Oh, help!